Hey guys, today we'll be talking about faults in the power system, mainly focusing on the electrical power system parts. So what is a fault? Fault is something that is not supposed to happen in the power system, meaning that you do not design for it to operate that way, but somehow a certain situation happens and a disturbance happens in your power system and that's what you call a fault. A simply a disturbance so we look at first we look at some causes of faults what are the things that can cause faults mainly I would like to put in the lightning lightning will cause some faults in the power system if it strikes onto your open bare conductors over voltage can happen flashover can happen those are called faults flashover over voltage There's also something that's called earth faults. Earth faults is when you have a transmission line or something and it's an object touches it and grounds the line to earth. Okay, the main difference between these two is that lightning is more of a transient fault by nature. It is a slightly more transient. Although these I call I call transient faults. And these are what you call permanent faults most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Permanent faults. Okay, um, we look into an example on how it is actually described. Okay, we have something like this. Here we have some generators. Because anything in a power system can just be represented by three objects. A source, generation, a transmission line, which is um, transmission and then uh, some loads this is a load any power system can be represented by these three elements you have a generation which is supplied electricity transmission you carry the current and then you have some loads which take up the current for usage okay what you have here is a fault this right here meaning that you did not design this to happen, but it happens. So what it looks like this is an earth fault. Earth fault. So anything could it could be like um, a transmission line, a tree fell uh, fell onto a transmission line and this touches the transmission line and then all the current instead of going through to the loads, it jumps onto the tree and the tree conducts it to the earth. And there you have an earth fault. This earth fault will be staying there by nature and it will just be stuck on the transmission line. And you suck up all the current from these two generators. Suck up everything. The load will have experienced very shortage of current. And you have a voltage drop on the side. And you see a voltage drop because V equals to IR. Suddenly your R is basically gone or is near zero straight down to earth i becomes very large when i becomes very large the v drops so this is more of a permanent fault permanent fault if you have something like a transient fault let me check here okay let me use this one a transient fault let's say lightning struck here zap uh, let's, let's ignore this part it's not here yet. Okay, this part, lightning is right. Voltage will increase because lightning ejects electricity into the system. If you have a certain voltage increase, your insulation will break down. Let's say you're having a transmission line. Transmission line, you know. We let me change the color. Yeah, something like this. Transmission lines. These are, by the way, these are open bare conductors. A lightning just strike here. Kapow! I strike here. What happens is this transmission line experiences an over voltage, and then you happen, it breaks the insulation. The insulation in this case basically is just the air insulation. The air. 
that prevents the lightning from just that prevents the uh, the current from just jumping from the line the trans the, the transmission line into any other object let's say the tower because here's some insulation here there's some insulation on both sides so this is this insulation is preventing the line electric electricity from this line to jumping into the tower but if there's an over voltage the insulation will break down and it because the insulation is only um, designed to handle a certain amount of voltage if your voltage is too high you this will break down it breaks past the insulation it jumps the current jumps from the line to the tower and it goes straight to the ground and this is the ground so lightning strikes here it goes straight to the ground that's how the path happens it over voltage it jumps from the line to the tower tower to the ground or it can jump from the line to another object let's say a tree or let's say something another near object that's why it's important to have clearance on transmission lines when object is near it can just jump across the voltage exceed it jumps across you're not designed for the voltage and then you have a fault when this happens everything the current is supposed to go this way it gets sucked down and this one gets sucked backwards and sucked down all down to this fault and that's you have another fault so this is what you call a transient fault because a transient fault because it is cleared it happens very quickly and it goes away very quickly so you see a certain voltage dip voltage dip that means the voltage suddenly is okay and then it drops it goes back up again while permanent fault is like a voltage it just sags voltage sag voltage sag so voltage is okay 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 and then boom drop and it sags yep that's why it's called permanent fault so a permanent fault happens to this and a transient fault contributes to a voltage dip okay so how do we tackle these two and both of these uh, problems? So let's go to, let's see, erase all this and try again to explain everything else. So if it's a permanent fault, for example, this case, hmm. a permanent fault would have looked like this. So what happens is that you want to clear the fault, you want to isolate, the T term is called isolation. You want to isolate this fault and you want it to, you want to send your team or maintenance to go and clear the fault and then you energize and normalize back the line and you restore the supply and you restore the line and you recover the grid. But the first term is called isolation, you must isolate this one. So you want to break these two or you isolate as close as possible to the line. So how do you isolate? You need, you need what is called circuit breakers. We are changing our explanator. Circuit breakers. They will break the circuit. Br -br 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 breaker. They're going to break the circuit and isolate the line. When that happens, you can work on this. Get this out of the way, clear it out and you are set to energize the line again but what if you do not isolate the line so say okay why do i need to isolate the line i can just you know send my team to you know remove this probably maybe it's a, it's a stick that's touching the ground this stick that stick you know that stick that stick you can remove the stick send someone to remove the stick when a person grabs the snake the electric current we flow from everywhere instead of going to the ground instead of going to ground you go to the person as well and this gets fried up and you get a and you have a super saiyan person here so and that person most likely become dead afterwards so you do not want that to happen that's why it's important to isolate the line okay when you isolate the line um, this is what you call a lockout, a lockout, because 
you open the breaker and then you keep the breaker open to for the line to be isolated the breaker opens the line is disconnected the line is disconnected and this is all de-energize de-energize you put some isolation of this so you drain out all the current because if you do not earth anything there is still some current here and residue current may still fry that person so what you need to earth this first and then you do the work remove this once everything is clear unearth unearth boom boom you energize back so a transient fault transient fault with lightning Okay, this is a bit more easier to explain because there's some breakers here. This is what you call a breaker. B1 and then B2. Breaker 1 and breaker 2. So what you need to do here is you need to... A lightning is very transient. Yes, the word I'm looking for is transient. Because once it hits the line, it disappears. The lightning is gone. But you have a voltage surge. Voltage surge. This voltage surge is the one that contributes to this. The current jumping into and uh, flashing over and going to the ground. Finding its way to the ground because that's what current wants to do. It's like water from the high ground. Suddenly, you just pour the water out. Just pour the water out. And then, of course, the water is going to go to the ground because it just looks for the way to ground. Gravity. Same case in electricity. It just finds the best way to ground. The shortest way, the most convenient way, Go straight to ground. So what happens is that this happens when a flash over happens. When a flash over happens, the ions in the air are energized. You know. So you have um. I'm gonna use this color. I'm gonna use white color. Yeah. These ions in the air, boom, they energize, and that is what is able to keep the thing. Conducting because normal air they are insulating, they are preventing the current from jumping over. But once you energize the air, the ions get energized and it gets a lot more easier to conduct. So you may not need that high of a voltage anymore. The voltage may just you may surge and then you may drop, you may drop afterwards. But then the air is ionized and energized, and therefore current can still conduct from the line to any up surface. And straight to the ground and therefore the fault will still exist in this case same with the similar to the transit uh, to the permanent fault your breaker will open you operate this side and this side you operate both sides this line is isolated the voltage uh, for a while it goes to zero because there is no more isolation this line you will lose its supply of you will lose its ionization because the current is no longer able to supply. You lose your current already. There's no more no current to supply the ionization. The air gets deionized, and then you what you call auto reclose. Auto reclose. So the breaker will reclose back. You close. And this line is normalized again. So there's no earth isolation. There's no earth isolation. Just so straight away, the breaker open and the breaker auto reclose. And this happens within like 30 milliseconds. Or what you know is uh, one and a half cycle. One and a half cycle of the electricity, you know, the frequency. One and a half cycle. And this line is normalized and and that's why I call it transient fault because it happens for a while and it's all normalized. You get a voltage dip because for a moment of that one and a half cycle, your line is temporarily dead and then it energizes back, the line is temporarily dead and it energizes back, normalized. That's why you have a voltage dip in the auto reclose. And that's all for this video. Check out my other videos to continue on this uh, fault isolation.